Hi, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to simulate a Blykenbacker attack on RSA using Python. This requires you to know about how encryption and decryption works in RSA. Uh, the attack that I'm doing is based on this tutorial by Ricardo Focati. So the Blykenbacker attack or the million message attack is a side channel attack which affects RSA encryption and decryption and in which the messages are padded, padded using PKCS number 1 version 1.5 padding. First, let's quickly see how we can encrypt and decrypt a message. We use OpenSSL for the encryption and decryption. First, to generate the key, we can use this command. Here I am generating a 1024 bit key. We can see that the private key has been generated and the E is 65537. To see the key and the exponents, we can use this command. Here we can see the exponents, the primes, the private exponent, public exponent and the modulus. This is the 1024 bit modulus that our RSA encryption and decryption is going to use. Next, let's see how we can encrypt a simple plain text using RSA. Suppose my plain text is hey. When we run this, this is what we get. So hey has been padded by the OpenSSL using a format which is known as PKCS number one version 1.5 format. And then it has been encrypted to this string. Now if we want to decrypt the same, we see that we got our original string back. So what we did is we used the encrypt function followed by the decrypt function. This is the command. We use the encrypt function followed by the decrypt function and we got our original message back. So this is basically how we work with RSA. Now, uh, as I said before, OpenSSL automatically pads our plain text using a PKCS number one format. Now, what if we want to pad our message ourselves? So before that, what exactly is this PKCS number one version 1.5 padding? Basically, it's just a padding scheme that follows this format. That is, the first two bytes should be 00 and 02, followed by a padding string which is at least 8 bytes, followed by a 00 and then our plain text which we want, which is the message. So, suppose we want to pad our message ourselves. We can use something called the raw flag when encrypting. Here I've written a Perl script. The first two bytes I'm printing it as 0002, then followed by a hundred zero ones. So as this this will be my padding string. And here there's a 00 followed by a message which I've converted from string to ASCII. So I've, I've made the padding as 100 so as to make this whole string of length 128 because my modulus is of size 1024. Let's see what happens when we run this. Yes, so this string has been correctly padded. That is why OpenSSL was able to encrypt it without a pa padding it itself. That is why we gave the raw flag and for decryption we don't give the raw flag because we wanted to decrypt using BKCS version number one format itself. Now what if we try to break the padding? For example, suppose I tried to give a 0003 instead of a 0002. we can see that we it returns an error says saying that the padding check failed padding check pkcs type 2 pkcs decoding error this is an important feature that is made use of in the blackenbacker attack 
we assume that there is a padding oracle which, given any ciphertext C, will decrypt it and tell us whether it is PKC is confirming or not. It does not reveal anything else about the plain text, just whether it is in the proper padding format. Now we have enough requirements to move on to our attack. Before we move on to the coding, let's see a bit of theory about the Blykenbacker attack. So what does it mean when we say that a message is PKCS confirming? We know that for a message to confirm with the PKCS standard, the first two bytes should be 00, 0 and 0, 02. And suppose we take a number b as 2 raised to 8 into k minus 2, which means we get a 0, 01 here. We know that a plain text m0 will be PKCS confirming if it falls between 2b and 3b minus 1. So this is the first range that we have for m0. Now the first step of our attack is to find a number s1 such that when it is multiplied by our plain text m0, it gives another message m1 which is PKCS confirming. So we need a number s1 such that it when multiplied with m0, it makes a message which is properly padded according to PKCS number 1 version 1.5 padding. Now we have a new range as 2b less than or equal to m1 less than or equal to 3b minus 1. On expanding m1 and removing the modulo sign, we get this range. And we need a range for M0, so we can rearrange it as follows. So this is what we call as the new range for M0. This was our initial range and from this we have derived the new range for M0. The only problem here is that we don't know what R is. R can take multiple values. So our next step will be to find the range for R or the values that, you know, that R can get. Using the same equation here, we find another range for R. And here when we get M0, we substitute it with this range that we had previously, which is 2b to 3b minus 1, and that is how we get this range for r. So now we have a range for r and we have a range for new range for m0. So uh, we e for each value of r in this range. We substitute it in the range for M0 and we get a new range for M0. So we started with a range from 2B to 3B. And in each iteration, suppose R, is, R has 3 values, we might get 3 intervals. And now we intersect these new intervals with the old intervals. And thus we can reduce the size of intervals for M0 in each iteration. So this is the basic idea behind the Blykenbacker attack. We find, uh, since it's an iteration and we can use a general term, we find a general SI, then we find the range of R using this formula. We can substitute all these S1s for SI to create a general equation. We find the range of R and for each value of R in that range, we substitute it in the new intervals for M0 and we intersect those new intervals with the previous intervals that is in the previous iteration. So this is the general idea of the attack. Now how do we start to find S1, the, the first value of S1? If we observe this range here, we can see that R is less than S1 into 3B minus 1 minus 2B by N. And we can generally write this as S1 into 3B by N. Now if we take a value of S1 which is equal to N by 3B, we see that this value becomes 1. So R is less than 1 if S1 is N by 3B. This means that R is equal to 0. If R is equal to 0, this 
m1 becomes s1 into m0 since the mode and part vanishes. Now if we take the minimum value of s1 that we can take that is s1 is equal to 2 we see that m1 is equal to 2 m0 but since m0 lies in the range 2b to 3b minus 1 2 m0 will lie in the range 4b to 6b minus 2 which as we can see is not PKCS conforming. So we start our search for s1 from the value of n by 3b. This is something that we need to keep note of. So this is the same strategy that we follow every time except the, when the case when there is only one interval left for m0 that is a to b. As long as there are more than one interval this is the, the previous method that I explained is the method that we follow. When there is only one interval left for m0 we do an optimization which will make the algorithm converge. Um, we can write a range for si as And if we pick an r which is greater than 2 into b s i minus 1 minus 2 b by n. Approximately from this range we get s i is greater than or equal to 2 s i minus 1. That is s i doubles in that step. Which means that the, inter the size of the interval for m0 will half. And this makes the attack converge in a linear number of steps. So this is basically the theory behind how this attack works. Now let's see how our attack can be implemented. I have written the code in Python. The first function here, SO, is our simulation of the padding oracle. It checks if the length of the plain text or M0 is 256, then checks if the first two bytes are 0002, then checks for a 00 after at least 8 bytes of padding, and returns true if all of these conditions are satisfied. Then I have written two functions to calculate the seal and floor of two numbers which we will use later. Here I have m0 which is our plain text which is the same text that I used earlier consisting of the 0 1 padding and I have the modulus which I got from the RSA key and I have converted it into an integer using the python translate function. Then I have declared some constants like b, b2, b3 and so on. And as we discussed earlier, the starting point for SI is set as n by 3b. I also have a set called new m which stores the new values of m0 that we calculate in each iteration. Next comes our loop which is where the attack actually takes place. The loop runs till the range for m0 converges to a single value. If there are more than two ranges or two or more ranges for m0 or if it is the first iteration, then we increment SI by 1 in each iteration and try to find an SI such that SI M0 is correctly padded by calling the oracle. And like I said earlier, if there is only one range left for M0, then we do an optimization. We first set an initial value for R, then calculate a range for SI and search for SI within that range. Once we have found our SI, the next step is to calculate a range for R and to find the new intervals of M0 for each value of R. Here we take each range in new M one by one, calculate the range for R and for each value of R in that range, we calculate new intervals for M0 and intersect with the old intervals to get the set new MM. If the number of new intervals is equal to 1, then we should check if the interval has converged. That is, we check if in the interval the first element is equal to the second element and if it is so, we have found our message. We make sure of that by cross-checking the message we found with the message that we gave, plain text that we gave at first and if so, our attack is successful. Now let's see how this attack is, works. Let's see by running it. So here 
we can see that the algorithm has found a message and let's check if it matches the original message and it since it finds a match the attack is successful and it is and the number of oracle calls is 1 lakh around 1 lakh 80000 and here we can see that all the details are displayed such as uh, the different values for si the range of r and so on so our blackenbacker attack has been successfully implemented thank you